When it comes to documentation of history, Africans historically have taken a route that may be considered unorthodox. The history of record keepers or griots in Africa is often a misunderstood and underappreciated aspect of African civilization. So today, we're going to learn about the history of griots throughout African society. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. As mentioned before, griots are a very undervalued aspect of African civilization. Some criticize the reliance of griot culture in Africa because at times those oral records have been lost due to the destruction or displacement of African society, and others simply don't consider it a valid form of record keeping. Hopefully in this video, we can have an open mind concerning the value of griots throughout African culture. Griots are oral historians or praise singers trained to recite the history, myths, and cultural beliefs of a given kingdom or village. I believe the philosophical purpose of griots was a powerful one. One can simply read a book or a record and put it down, but the reciting of history through music or poetry in griot culture was meant for the history to be intrinsically tied into the fabric of everyday life, becoming a part of the popular culture. In other words, the history was ingrained in the minds of the average person and can be seen as a function of their daily activities, not something that simply happened in the past. Now, no one has been able to say with any degree of certainty when griots first came into being, but one can assume it stems from ancient times. The earliest reference to griots or griot culture in West Africa comes from the Soninka Dausi. The Dausi is an epic set of poems and oral traditions compiled by Soninka griots, perhaps around the 4th century. These Soninka griots tell us of the first Mande griot who came into existence. According to the Soninka, the first griot was a man named Gasir, who used to be a warrior prince waiting for his father to die so he can have the throne, but fate told him that he would become a griot instead. Another reference to griots occurred in the Mali Empire. After a traveler Ibn Battuta visited the royal court of the Mali Empire in 1352, he wrote of the man known as Dugha, the king's royal griot, wearing a symbolic bird mask. Dukha stood before the king and recited the story of his predecessors, their accomplishments, and family history. However, Ibn Battuta, a staunch Muslim, was unable to see past appearances or protocol to understand Dukha's actual function, which entailed lengthy recitations. Details concerning births, deaths, members of the royal family, the results of various wars, achievements of the king and his predecessors, and countless myths associated with the original founders of their society were also important aspects woven into the culture of the griot. Counterparts of the griot in West Africa were known in Eastern Sudan as Wali. In some Islamized North African regions, they were called marabouts. More often than not, griots were single men who traveled without restraint. Their freedom was often weighed against responsibilities that ranged from simple to extraordinarily complex. For example, some griots were relegated to the category of a public musician singer and played the kora, a small percussive instrument. Griot styles varied from region to region and sometimes included background singers who also played musical instruments. In other regions, such as present-day Gambia, griots performed special chants. At public events, griots often created songs designed to invoke memories and emotions surrounding specific incidents or circumstances of the past. At other times, songs were related to experiences unfolding at the moment, such as rites of passage, including baptisms, initiations, and funerals. The range of the griots artistry often included audience participation, and many historians have likened the call and response between griot and audience to modern-day African-American church traditions. Griots who were part of the royal kingdoms of West Africa gained recognition, fame, and wealth 
but had much more complex responsibilities. Among the Bambara people, griots were known as the Yelifama, meaning royalty. They were also considered custodians or keepers of words. In addition to the ability to entertain, they served as court historians, teachers, and mediators during disputes and trading transactions. They helped to facilitate political marriages by bringing together not only bride and groom, but entire families. They kept history alive for the king, members of the court, and royal descendants by narrating their entire genealogy. Among the Akan people of Ghana, the griot performed for local inhabitants when a new king was installed. This enabled them to judge the king's abilities and virtues based on the oral recitation given by the griot. Griots therefore embody the entire history of a people, and when able to pass their craft on to younger members of the caste, formed a continuous oral tradition that could be preserved for many generations. In many instances, modern griot presentations have aided archaeologists and historians in significant ways, helping them to interpret the reconstruction of physical remnants of the past, or supplying missing aspects about the life and culture of ancient and medieval Africa. In this way, griots and their oral accounts have provided tremendous insight and value for us as we continue to unravel all the intricacies of African history. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey. Ooh, ooh. Hey, hey.